know, in the first reading this morning, I think it's a, a beautiful expose of the life of King David. You know, Sirach, he, he begins with this, what I think is this beautiful image when he says, like the choice fat of sacrificial offerings, the choice fat of sacrificial offerings, so was David in Israel. And then as we heard, Sirach chooses to summarize the life of King David in grand fashion. He lists all of David's accomplishments throughout his life, this killing of Goliath, this great Philistine with a rock, the defeat of the Philistines. He talked about the praises he received from others because of these great accomplishments, the many songs and the prayers that he wrote. We heard these words, with every deed, he offered thanks to God Most High in words of praise. With his whole being, he loved his maker and daily had his praises sung. Almost like he's glorifying this man. But if we read accounts from the books of Samuel and Chronicles, it is there that his sins will be revealed. This adultery, he murdered his loyal servant so he could take his wife. He forgot about his role as a steward of God's people. How come Sirach didn't mention those? The only thing he said had to say about his sins is that the Lord forgave them. That was it. I don't know the reason by that, but that's the reality. So by Sirach's description, it was all glory. But as we know, God would not let David build his temple since his hands had, been sh had shed too much blood. But by Sirach's account, David was a hero. And perhaps he is a hero. He did a lot of great things. He served God well in many ways, but he also was a great sinner. He was also a human being oftentimes ruled by his disordered passions, those things that led him to sin. Because what leads us to sin for all of us is our disordered passions. We just have to realize what those passions are in our own lives. Herod, Herod too was a king, right? And like King David, King Herod also was ruled by his disordered passions that was on display totally in this gospel passage today. The difference between the two? David repented of his sins. Herod could not bring himself to do so. He could not bring himself to respond to John the Baptist's call to repentance. So Herod died a weak, cowardly man. David died a man who knew deeply the mercy of God. Which do we want to choose? You know, the biblical notion of repentance is, is not just confessing sin. Oh, that's an important part of it, but it involves a willingness to turn one's life around, a conversion of mind and hearts. Our hearts won't be converted if our minds are not converted because whatever is in up here comes out in here and then comes out in our actions. Repentance is a, is a turning away from sin and turning completely toward God. So oftentimes our own repentance is only partial because we don't always turn completely toward God. 
It's to undo the negative and do the positive. How much negativity is still in our hearts? It's to get our act together to shape up. Repentance is that the sinner forsakes his sin and puts it away out of his thoughts and mind, fully resolves in his mind that he will not do it again. And that will only happen when we turn completely to God. So why would we want to repent and reform our lives? Why would we want to do that? Not because we dread the loss of heaven and the pains of hell. Not because of that. Because the reign of God is at hand. God's profound love and mercy wants to be poured out upon us. That's why. God's reign of unconditional love, mercy, and compassion and healing is knocking at the door of our hearts. This is the promise. Do we believe the promise? Truly believe the promise, huh? Let me put it in an even simpler way, where we can all understand it. Right? We like simple language, don't we? Repentance is the recognition that I am infinitely loved by God, that I have sometimes failed to live up to that love, that I need his mercy. That's it. That's it. How many of us want repentance? How many want us to live a life of repentance, a daily life of repentance? Huh? Repentance in the end is giving God a free hand to work in my life as he wants to. How many of us are afraid to do that? Raise your hands, because you all are. You all are. But this, this is supremely freeing when we do that, Give, giving God a free hand to work in our lives as he wants to. It's the ultimate freedom. It means that I don't have to save myself. How many of you get up every day thinking you have to save yourself? Raise your hand because you all do that. We all do that. It means that I allow Jesus to enter into my life fully and take total control. And all of us in some way are control freaks. Aren't we? And that's hard to do because we don't know the outcome. We can't control the outcome. And we don't trust the outcome. A lack of trust in God is sin. It's sinful. So if that's the way we live our life, that's, we're living a sinful life. Jesus always pointed out the true repentance means accepting that God is free to work on our lives as he sees best. He is God, we're not. And he loves us so much and knows what is best for us. We don't. And he wants what, best is, what is best for us. And we don't, because we don't know what is best for us. There's a sense of ignorance in that sense. Not, it's an ignorance in the sense of unknowing. In other words, my friends, our merciful God gives you and me the opportunity to retrace our steps. As we talked about the last couple of First Fridays, we do this through the sacrament of penance. You'll hear more about that today downstairs after Mass, the last segment. Many people have the fear of confession. How many of you do? Don't raise your hands, I don't want to know. <laughs> but I want you to tell Jesus that you are fearful of confession. Tell him that and let him move your heart to receive love and mercy. But if it is an encounter of Christ's love, why, why would anyone fear that? So how do we move from the fears of confession to an understanding and joyful experience of feeling loved and forgiven by the Lord? How do we move to that? 
There's only one way. One way. It's called repentance. True repentance allows us to be carried by the Father. Now allow yourself to imagine this. True repentance allows us to be carried <clears throat> by the Father. It allows us to be possessed by the Father. What is being possessed by the Lord like? He can't let go of us. He can't let go of us. He can't give you up. He can't give you away. Why? Nothing will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. That's the promise. Jesus is the face of the Father's mercy. He came to lead you and me into the arms of his Father. That's what repentance is about. Allow yourself to be carried by the Father. Say yes to that and be held by the Father. Say yes to that. Ask him for it. Father, hold me as you desire. Possess me as you desire, Father. So I know what true love is. Perfect love. Perfect love casts out all fear. It's always important to remember this. You and I, we are not the sum of our weakness. We are the sum of the Father's love for us. That's what we celebrate right here today. That's why you're here, hopefully. And to carry us, to possess us, it is then that we are led to conversion. And then salvation will be ours.